Um, in the previous Hadamar Matrix workshop, I had the opportunity to meet Porek, and he told me at the time that the sequences with good autocorrelation I was looking into, um, they were one of 16 types of cocyclic Hadamard matrices. The story goes that it wasn't exactly like that, uh, but somewhat related. Uh, we kept sort of exchanging emails, and the result of this communication is this work um, as well with um, Heiko Dietrich. So, well, um, let me just start um, by saying that in my talk, all matrices are real matrices. Okay. And so I'm going to consider the monomial group of, say, plus and minus one monomial matrices of order n. These are also known as sign permutation matrices. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the direct product of two copies of this group, and I'm going to let it act on the set of plus and minus one matrices of order n via the action that I'm describing here in one. Now, this way, we can say that two Hadamard matrices are equivalent if and only if they lie in the same orbit under this action. Okay. So an advantage of presenting things in, in this way is that I can also say that the automorphism group of a Hadamard matrix H is precisely the point stabilizer under this action. Okay. So this fellow is a group. So an element here, we just call it an, an automorphism of H. So in particular, if we look at all the automorphisms whose components are actually permutation matrices, that forms a subgroup of um, the automorphism group, and we call it permot. Okay, so this is a distinguished group that I'm going to use later for a characterization of cocyclic Hadamard matrices. So please keep it in mind. Okay, so let's recall for a moment that, well, Hadamard matrices, they have been classified, well, uh, up to orders less or less or equal to 28 up to equivalence um, through efforts of numerous mathematicians in the 80s and 90s. And we also have the classification of Hadamard matrices of order 32 up to equivalence. This was achieved in 2010, and there are exactly 30,710,027 equivalence classes. So we observe a combinatorial explosion at this point. And so, well, given the profusion of Hadamard matrices, uh, or, or equivalence classes of Hadamard matrices, even at small orders, it makes sense to study and classify Hadamard matrices with special types or you know, certain types. Right, so one of these types is the family of cocyclic Hadamard matrices that were introduced by Deloney and, and Horadam as a class of Hadamard matrices with additional algebraic properties. And so in the following, um, and for the rest of the talk, G is going to be a finite group, and A is a G module, or equivalently, you can think of this as a Z G module. Okay, as you sort of prefer. So allow me for a moment to introduce some definitions from group theory. You might have seen these a number of times. I think it's kind of useful to recall them here before we actually introduce a definition for um, a cocyclic Hadamard matrix. So the first thing is, what is a two cocycle? Well, it is a map from the product G cross G into A, such that it satisfies this equation here in two. And we observe here, there is this action of G obviously on A, so up here is just right in here. Uh, we say the cocycle is normalized whenever we enter the identity in any of the components. So the cocycle spits out a, well, the identity again. And in particular, the set of two cocycles, it forms a group under addition. Okay, so we call it like this, Z2GA. Now, cocycles are not that rare, and hopefully my following definition is going to convince you of that. Um, a very special type of cocycle is a cobandry. So a two cobandry is a cocycle that looks like this for a map phi from G to A. So whenever you have a map from a group to a, an abelian group, you don't even have to have necessarily a G module structure, it could be simply the trivial structure, you can always construct a cocycle in this form. So again, the set of two cobandaries, it forms a subgroup of the set of cocycles. And so, well, I also want to talk a little bit about extensions, but in particular about central extensions of groups. Okay, so a central extension of a 
group A by G is a group E that admits a central subgroup, we'll just call it A dash, hence normal, such that it is isomorphic to A and the quotient E modulo A dash is isomorphic to G. Okay, so we are interested in central extensions of A by G. In particular, we say that two central extensions, let's just say E and E dash of A by G are equivalent if they felt if this if, sorry if this diagram actually commutes um this is indeed an equivalence relation and sort of partitions um extensions into equivalence classes and so we have these very famous uh, sort of well-established result that tells us that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between classes of central extensions of a by g and the elements in the second cohomology group which is exactly second cohomology group that's right um, which is exactly the quotient of uh, the group of cocycles by the group of co-boundaries. Okay, so now that we have introduced all of these definitions, I'm ready to introduce the actual um, definition for a cocyclic Hadamard matrix. So in the following, I'm going to work with C2. So A is basically uh, the cyclic group of order two generated by native one. So I'm thinking of these multiplicatively. And so, well, I'm also going to consider that G has a trivial G module structure on A. There's not really much I can do in terms of actions in here. Um, okay, so a Hadamard matrix of order for N is cocyclic with index group G. And so we fix an ordering for the elements in G, right? Um, if there exists a two cocycle psi and a map phi such that the matrix age is equivalent to a matrix of this form, what we call a cocyclic Hadamard matrix. Okay, so um, in other, in, in, on the other hand, if psi is trivial, then we say that H is group developed. Okay, so whenever this fellow is actually trivial, then we end up with only this component. So we call it a group developed Hadamard matrix. I think you've seen those a number of times already. Now, Almost all classical families of Hadamard matrices are indeed cocyclic, just to name, I guess, pretty much all of the classical ones. So Sylvester, Pelli 2, 1 and 2, Williamson and Ito families, they're all cocyclic. It is indeed conjectured that there exists a cocyclic Hadamard matrix of order for n for all positive integers n. Um, and uh, Porek proved in the past that there is another um, classical family, the twin prime power construction that is not necessarily uh, cocyclic, which is sort of interesting to mention here. Okay, so in the following, I'm going to introduce a characterization for group developed Hadamard matrices. And this is going to help me in turn to introduce a characterization for cocyclic Hadamard matrices. So I'm going to consider for every G in G, these two matrices, they are permutation matrices, indeed they are the, uh, permutation matrices induced by the left and right multiplication in G. So they're actually the left and right regular uh, permutation representation of the group G. And so uh, we have the following characterization due to Deloney and Flannery. So uh, let H be a Hadamard matrix. So it is group developed over G, if and only if the stuple TG at G, it is indeed a permutation of automorphism of H for all G and G. If and only if the permutation automorphism group contains a subgroup isomorphic to G that acts regularly on rows and regularly on columns. It's also a good place to mention that the order of a group developed Hadamard matrix is a square. I guess pretty much everyone should know this here. Um, and so I'm ready now to introduce a characterization for cocyclic Hadamard matrices, but for that, I need to introduce this object here which is called the expanded matrix of a Hadamard matrix. So what we do is we take this chronic product of this matrix and the Hadamard matrix. And so um, in the following, let H be a cocyclic Hadamard matrix with index in group G, cocycle psi, and extension or sort of canonical extension induced by the cocycle, uh, the one that I'm given here. So you can think of these, say the underlying set is precisely the product of G and C2. And the multiplication is given by this expression. So we observe sort of the cocycle here in the actual product of these two elements in here. 
All right, so that's my setting. And so, um, well, Katain Ohayen and Roda, sometimes I mispronounce your name and I really apologize for that, is my Spanish background coming up. Um, so, well, we have that a matrix H is cocyclic with indexing group G and cocycle psi. If and only if it's expanded design, it's expanded array, is group developed over this canonical extension induced by psi. If and only if there is an embedding, let's just call it Yota, from this canonical extension onto a regular subgroup of the permutation automorphism of the expanded array of H that maps distinguished elements into distinguished elements. We'll use this later. But for the time being, let me restrict the attention now to cocyclic Hadamard matrices of order 4P, which is what we're interested. And I'm sort of putting this restriction here, and I'll explain in a second why I'm putting that extra condition in there. Okay, this is probably a good time for me to drink some water because my mouth is super dry. <laughs> Okay, um, I was also thinking that a good outcome of this talk is uh, me not being the person that actually falls down through those stairs, as Carol said um, on Monday. <laughs> okay, so, so yeah, so I'm going to consider cosyclic Hadama matrices of these orders, um, again, with indexing group G and cosyclic psi. So a combination of Silo theorems and Shua and house tells us that the group G is indeed um, a split group and it splits in the following way. So here you've got um, a normal subgroup that is isomorphic to CP. And this fellow here is a Silo 2 subgroup. So this fellow has order four. And the existence of this group in here then guarantees the existence of this normal subgroup in here. And so this fellow also splits, okay? Um, and moreover, this fellow again is the two, well, the Silo 2 subgroup, in the extension. And moreover, it's isomorphic to the semi-direct product. So here we take in the extension of C2 by K uh, induced by the cocycle psi, but this cocycle has now been restricted from G cross G into K cross K. Okay, so uh, we've got the following result by Ito that tells us that uh, the Silo two subgroups of these canonical extension cannot be cyclic or dihedral. If you remember from your group theory course, uh, there are five, um, five classes of um, is is isomorphism types of groups of order eight. So we have disqualified two of them. So we are remaining here with these three isomorphism types, but we can disqualify one more. And that is because if we consider K hat to be precisely the direct product of three copies of C2, then what's going to happen is that your matrix in the end is going to end up being group developed, but group developed matrices, they have square order, but the order of our matrices are precisely 4P, so a contradiction. And so we have the following result by um, Deloney and Flannery that tells us that with all the sort of setting that I put before, G looks like this, and this is the canonical extension induced by the cycle. Then the group K hat is isomorphic to Q8 or C4 times C2. The elements of Q hat, K hat, sorry, they act on N hat either trivially or by inversion. And the group G is either isomorphic to the direct product of two copies of C2 and one of CP or the dihedral group of order 4P. Now, a Technical calculation using precisely that expanded array of the Hadamard matrix then tells us that every, um, okay, let me just go back for a moment and actually tell you the reason why I'm sort of considering here P greater than three. Um, the, the only reason for this is because um, we, can, we can't really apply Silo theorem here to sort of guarantee the existence of a normal subgroup in there just via the Silo theorems. Um, and so this is not a huge problem because Hadamard matrices, cosyclic Hadamard matrices of order 12, they, they are already classified. Um, so there's, there's just one single class of those. Okay, so I wanted to clarify that. So let me go back here and tell you that, um, well, all cosyclic Hadamard matrices of order for P, again, P a prime greater than three, they all equivalent to a matrix of this form. So let me tell you a little bit what you're observing here because there are a number of parameters sort of telling you um, 
I'll describe in the matrix actually. Um, well, so we've got blocks, W, X, Y, and Z. And so this resembles a little bit a Williamson or a Ito uh, Hadama matrix um, in that sense. And then we also have um, RST, so they range in this set, and they basically given us some signs that accompany the blocks. Where do these signs come from? Well, they come from the cocycles indeed, um, associated to the actual matrix H. And then we also have some actions floating. And so my blocks, they're all back circulant, right? And so my possible actions for the elements in K acting on the elements in A, well, uh, they're actually trivial or by inversion. And so whenever one of those actions is by inversion, what it does to the block is basically it makes it into a circulant block indeed. Um, okay. So now there are a large number of equivalences. I'm not really going to ask you to read this slide, but uh, there is a, a large number of equivalents happening here amongst all these possibilities. So we really filtered through all of these, right? And um, in addition with some um, number theory results, um, we can sort of narrow it to the following. So we're going to consider W, X, Y, and Z to be the row sums of the blocks W, X, Y, and Z respectively. And so every cosaically Karama matrix of order for P, P prime greater than three is equivalent to one of the following. So, um, well, RST has to be one, 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 and the possible actions of the elements of K into N are trivial, trivial, or trivial inversion, or RST is one, one, zero. In this case, P has to be congruent to one mod four, and the actions are trivial, trivial, trivial inversion, or inversion, inversion. Or we could also have P congruent to three mod four, or P congruent to one mod four, but the block, sorry, the block row sums satisfying this condition, then in that case, H is always equivalent to a Williamson type matrix or the transposed of, a, of an Ito matrix. And when I say a Williamson type matrix, um, what we mean by that, it's a matrix that um, follows the template of a Williamson matrix, it's just that the actual blocks are not necessarily symmetric, right? Which is kind of like the, Sort of general version of the standard, well, the or originally introduced Williamson matrix. So in that case, um, all those Hadamard matrices would be equivalent to one of this type. And we can also have that cosaically Hadamard matrices of this form, they can only exist if P is congruent to one mod four, and the row sums that need to satisfy these conditions in here. So we put all of these into an algorithm in combination with um, other ideas. Uh, for instance, the idea of looking into eigenvalues for the gram matrix. Um, so we implemented an algorithm in Magma and um, performed the classification of these matrices up to um, 13. So things that we could say about this is for the orders five and seven, four times five and four times seven, um, our classification agrees with the classification that Ohio and Roda presented for cyclic Harama matrices of orders at most, or to, uh, at most, at most, at least, at least 40. So 40 is not included, right? Up to, yeah, up up to, to, up to okay, up to 36, that's right. Um, and then for P equals 11 and 13, uh, our algorithm found 63 and 330, 336 non-equivalent cyclic Harama matrices. Now, one thing that I want to sort of highlight here is um, that we're really, really looking into this group and this one here. Everything else that appears here is just basically a repetition of what's going on in here. Um, as I mentioned before, if we've got a prime that is congruent to three mod four, then there won't be anything here that's guaranteed by our results. But something interesting that we observe is that nothing is coming up here by considering these actions, trivial, 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 inversion, inversion, trivial. So everything comes up by considering the actions, inversion and inversion. Um, another interesting thing to observe here is that none of these matrices in here are actually equivalent to matrices in here, right? So we don't know whether that is actually the case. Uh, it would be nice to have a little bit more results and maybe tackle this problem. 
those questions. And one more thing that I wanted to say about this table is that all um, the matrices that appear that have the actual Williamson structure, they come from here. And all of these fellows, they would actually give you um, the transpose of an Ito matrix. Now I put in gray um, some of these numbers and those are exactly the calculations that we would have to perform based on our theorems of what are those matrices that happen to be equivalent. So if we were only to consider these calculations, uh, we would end up having the classification. So this sort of suggests that there are other sort of equivalents going on that we might have not been able to see yet um, at this point. Okay, so the two questions that I just said before about um, not having any um, cyclic Hadamard matrices in here of this type, but also um, the fact that these matrices are not equivalent to a Williamson or the transpose of an Ito type, but those are open questions. Now, pushing our calculations, I, I was really hoping that Elias would be here to catch his attention, but obviously he's not. Um, so in view of our theorem uh, for the decomposition of four times 17 that we need to consider for the row sums are exactly these ones. Um, when we want to look into this type of precisely Karama matrix um, in combination with these actions. But also um, if we want to consider now this other class, then this would be the actual um, decompositions of this number in combination with these actions. Um, and now for the case P equals 19, um, well, we know that all cyclic Karama matrices would be then equivalent to um, the Williamson type or the transpose of an type. And that really concludes my talk. Thank you. <laughs>